I wore my team shirt for the night. All right, team skeptic. Very good. Hello, everybody. I am Susan Gerbic, and I will be facilitating um, a workshop tonight that we are just creating for the very first time. Thank you for being my first guinea pigs uh, doing it online. So this should be interesting. The reason why we are doing these, uh, I, well, I put together these workshops for very are for various reasons. One of them is we're trying to get groups to come back together in person, which kind of seems silly considering I'm doing this online. But <laughs> Uh, what what I'm looking for and what CSI is looking for is we're trying to see if we can get maybe more people trained on this method that I'm going to roll out. I have uh, there's three workshops that I've written so far, and um, they build on top of each other as we go, and they have very very uh, specific goals and they're very uh, clear goals, uh, but um, it'll become a little more evident in a minute. So we're also trying to find people who are willing to possibly become leaders in the community who want to be able to uh, do workshops or something else for their community in the hopes that maybe we'll be able to uh, build the community or, you know, the skeptic community back together again. So what we're going to be doing today, oh, one of the other re uh, reasons why we're doing this, because we're trying to get more people inter understanding the resources that are available to you. Who are the people in the community? What are the resources available? Where can you go to find information? But um, I'm doing it in small chunks so that we can make it a lot more uh, available for you to be able to find these things. So there's three goals we're gonna do. The first one is the overwhelming motive. The motive through this whole workshop is this phrase. And the phrase is, we want people to become the person that people come to whenever they have questions about strange things. Adrian and I talked about this and she's, I don't know if it's because she's Canadian or she's just really, really nice, but she doesn't seem to have this problem. But what, what uh, a lot of us do is we become defensive whenever we uh, meet somebody who's got some kind of really strange belief. And as much as we want to be kind about it, we just feel like they're, you know, you want to call them an idiot. You roll your eyes. You immediately, you know, just become defensive and like, yeah, uh-huh, sure, you know. And so what we want to do is we want to try to make people uh, involve you in conversations that will make it so it's a, a more of a mindset of how to become that person. So there's there's two rules. The rule number one is, oh, and by the way, this this is a, a, a workshop, so I'm facilitating it. It is not about me talking to you. So you guys are going to be doing some talking. So get in it. So here, uh, uh, let me get through this part, though, though. Okay. The first one is, is there harm? Is there harm in the person's believing this, this, this weird question, this thing that they have? Is there harm, immediate harm, I should say? Is there immediate harm for the person who's believing in this strange thing that they came to tell you about? So, Rob, give me a strange, give me something that would be harmful immediately to somebody who believes something. Well, I'm going to have to go back any further than Sunday. We're at a square dance and we're in a break and the caller for the square dance. Uh, just earlier, we had all discussed as a group whether or not we were going to let people who are unvaccinated back in, because since the pandemic started, you had to show a, vaccin a vaccination card and all that, whatever. So we all discussed that collectively. But then after that was over, he came over to me and go, goes, Rob, I'm still not sure that there aren't microchips and they're tracking us somehow from the COVID vaccination. So that might convince him not to get a booster. I'm pretty sure it has. Okay. <laughs> That's a good one. Roger, do you have one? Immediate harm. Vermictal. For which one? Vermictal. It's uh, apparently a, a, in some doses a horse medicine. That's where it's available. Oh, ivermectin? Is that what it's called? I'm sorry. You're right. Ivermectin. My oh, bad. I thought. I, I, thought no. I, don't, I don't care about it to remember. But I have, <laughs> one, I have one friend in particular who will not shut up about it. And, and actually a couple of friends. And they, they make several... You know, there's several errors there. Like it's not the same medicine at the tractor supply. It's not the same medicine as when they use it in humans, right? And if if not anything else, but dosage. But I think the formulation is different too. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I remember because it's for malaria or whatever. Anyway, that's just the one that comes to mind because I, I heard it most recently. Christy, you're next. 
I was thinking about um, over-the-counter supplements that tout, you know, all these claims and aren't regulated and we don't really know what's in them. And it may be, um, may be messing with your medications and things like that, but doctors don't have a way of like being up to date on every single new miracle supplement that's coming out and understanding how it interacts with your medications. Very good. Adrian. I had a student who told me that he'd just been diagnosed with melanoma skin cancer and was definitely not going to seek um, medical treatment, but was going to go the natural route. And he knew that that would be more effective than what the doctor was going to be recommending. Well, at least he went to the doctor to get diagnosed. So at least there's <laughs> some, something there. Okay. That's, that's an immediate. Okay. So this is what, what I'm, um, that's rule number one. Is the person that you're dealing with, is this somebody who, um, you know, is this some case that you need to like, like intervene immediately? Oh my gosh, no, absolutely not. You're not jumping off the building. You cannot fly kind of stuff, right? So <laughs> you got to intervene. Um, what, what the lessons we're going to be practicing today are not those things intervening in that way. It's going to be more of a conversation you can have with somebody over a period of time, like a coworker, a family member, a friend, uh, somebody you see often, or you know, often enough that you could end up having a continuing conversation with. And that's the second rule I have is how much time do you have? So if you are um, like you're wearing a shirt like Rob has is a skeptic on it, and you're in the elevator and somebody says, Well, what's that? Well, then you only have one or two or three or four floors to actually kind of give them the the pitch, you know, that it's consumer protection and and we believe things that are, you know, whatever your little pitch is. Um, if you're riding on an airplane, you've got an hour with them and they say, what's that you're reading? Skeptical Inquirer. I see there's a vampire in the front. I, I think vampires are, are amazing. But you know what? My sister <laughs> was bitten by one or something. I don't know. So you have a little more time with somebody uh, to have a conversation with them. So you got to make sure that the time that you have with that person is useful <laughs> and finding a way of getting so you can have a conversation with them that's respectful enough that they'll continue the conversation and not like turn their back to you or call the flight attendant and say, can I have another seat? Because I don't want to be next to this, this uh, skeptic curmudgeon person next to me. So you got to, got to find a way of making sure that uh, you can continue a conversation with somebody in a way that will leave it open enough that they'll want to, you know, continue having a conversation and, um, continue the dialogue. One of the problems that we have is that we don't necessarily use the same words as uh, somebody who may be into magical thinking. We use the same words, but they don't have the same meaning. And that's something that we 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 don't realize. We just seem to think that, okay, we're both speaking English, so why don't you understand that this is a theory? It's only a theory. But it doesn't mean it's a theory like you mean it's a theory. You know, a lot of times we talk past each other. We don't really actually talk to the person. Can anybody give me a good example of that? Using words that are not, that we don't. don't Sorry, my brain. Can you ask that again? Because my so brain. Can you think kind of, of any kind of ways, words or phrases or, or that we use with somebody? We just assume that they they mean what they think, what, you know, that means we have a common meaning for it, but it really, we really don't. Like well, theory. Ev evidence is a big one. I mean, it's just, you know, anything can be evidence, but there's all those levels of what is reasonable to assume is accurate. And someone says, oh, I have evidence for that. And, you know, their evidence was a post on Facebook, you know, or some personal thing they have, we're talking about, you know, medication kind of a thing with alternative medicine. Oh, no, I know it worked for me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that's the difference. And most, you know, scientific skeptics would understand that that's not reasonable evidence to make a conclusion based on. Just skeptic, the word skeptic. Oh, yeah. I'm skeptical of this. <laughs> skeptical <laughs> skeptic. of that NASA I, I saying that, we went to the moon, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, mm. I'm skeptical that that happened, or I'm skeptical that the Earth is round, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, Christy or Roger, do you have anything you can think of? Um, I'm coming from the realm of a uh, fundamentalist religion, and I'm just thinking in the inverse how religions have like co-opted certain words that now mean something different, you know, to their pra practices and principles. I can't think of anything specific, but I forget, Christy, which one is which one's your background? Um, I'm from Mormonism. Oh, uh, yeah, there was a lot of different words. I just heard someone talking so, the other day, and I didn't know three things they said in one sentence. Yeah, the, the, the vernacular that I grew up with, like, I realized that the definitions for things don't mean the same thing to other people outside of the organization. Yeah, so I grew up Church of Christ in Arkansas, and, and that's evangelical, and I have, I have exactly the same experience. I've, I've made more than one Facebook post that just kind of lists all of the things the words that I know right now that don't mean the things that they used to mean. And for some reason, the only one that comes to mind is that homosexual does not mean pedophile. Oh but, but when I grew up, homosexual mean, meant pedophile. Anytime pedophile was the word, they would say homosexual. Very interesting. I had not thought of that one, but you're absolutely right. I was and there's, there's dozens of others, but I, I can't oh think my of gosh. them at the moment. Well, what's the what what's the word when you get married it's not, it's not actually just married it's people in your family so that you can go to heaven together what's that word sealed when you're yeah, sealed, sealed. 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 Yeah. It's like yeah. wow you're so sealed. um the first time somebody said that to me it's like oh but we won't be sealed anymore like, what and uh, <laughs> you like an envelope you're ripped open what are you talking about <laughs> um i was just the people that i interact with the most are from that organization um that I would be having these skeptical conversations with. And so the, the issue that I run into is when they're saying certain words that are triggering to me and my religious trauma, it's hard to not get aggravated from, from almost weaponizing language. You're pushing your buttons, huh? Yeah, and, and um, they get the trump card because it, it's- Ooh, there's a word. God, God Trump. That Trump itself. <laughs> yeah, but they <laughs> have the meaning can't... these days. Exactly. But like they they have a Trump over what I'm trying to say because it's what God said. God works in mysterious ways, Christy. We don't need evidence. Who are you to question God? Yeah, I know, I know where this is. I'm also thinking of some of the other new agey words like energy. Well, there's energy in it, you know. Well, don't don't you know about the energy of it? And you're like, well, energy doesn't actually mean what. That's how what energy means. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I feel like, like quantum that. has been oh, quantum, quantum. Oh, has been vibration. <laughs> Which one, Adrian? Vibration. Vibration. It goes along with energy, vibrational energy, right? And I'm getting a vibration from this, <laughs> right? Or you know, all oh, okay. So so you guys get the idea. So when you're having a conversation with somebody who believes in strange things or has who believes in magical thinking, you may not be having the same conversation they're having. So your really great points you're making are just fa falling on deaf ears because they don't have, you haven't even developed a conversation. You haven't even developed a set of same words or, or some way of um, some commonality, some, some rules of the game, the rules of the discussion. You haven't even... You haven't even started with that. So it's very difficult to, to just start off with somebody and say, well, you know, UFOs aren't real. We know this because of uh, interstellar distances and, and light waves, and you can't go over the speed of light. And, you know, that's the, another problem we have is maybe we're talking down to people and we're using large words, mathematical words, sciencey words, and the other person's going, wow, you think I'm an idiot, don't you? You know, you're, why are you using such words? So, so I want us to be aware of that. That's part of one of the reasons for these workshops is to at least be aware that you, we do not have necessarily the common language with a person that is, that is more of a magical thinking. And then the other thing, this is the big word, and, and Adrian was at SciCon, Rob is at SciCon, and um, that's the big Vegas conference in, that's held in October every year for Center for Inquiry. And the phrase that kept coming up over and over during uh, SciCon was this, this, this thing called pre-bunking. 
And I've been using it for a long time in the Wikipedia world. And I've been saying it's uh, we're trying to inoculate people. We're trying to inoculate them against bad information. So my thought is if you give them something that they can ponder and understand, then when they're when they're faced with that, they'll already have some sort of understanding that, you know, I've heard of this, you know, like a pyramid scam. If you've already, if you've already kind of gone over the basics of it, you've talked to them and you've said, you know, my sister was almost caught in a pyramid scam. And they'll be like, well, what's that? And you say, oh, that's this. And you kind of explain it and and um, you give them enough background on it that when they encounter something very similar, they'll say, that seems really familiar. I think I've heard about this. So you've you've given them an, I, I call it an inoculation, and it's kind of like pre-bunking. You're giving them enough information, even if it isn't exactly it. Like you don't say, here's the Mormon church. Here's exactly what's the tenets of the Mormon church. And then they go, okay, I understand the Mormon church. But when they encounter another church that's similar, but it is a Mormon's, they hopefully they'll have enough understanding to to get the no the scientologists like, must be true they use those real sciencey e-meter things <laughs> e -meters. well so that's what i'm saying so there's pre-bunking versus debunking now i wanted to see if anybody could come up with a good definition of what debunking is who wants it don't rush me i can do it but i like someone else to say it first I write about Adrian. Adrian unmuted herself, so I think she wants to do it. No, I was just going to say much the same as Rob. I... <laughs> that you wanted to debunking, right? Okay, so what is what is the definition of debunking? Which is what our our community has been about it for for years, I, and years and years is debunking. Uh, I always thought it was just um, looking at arguments and or not arguments. I guess. Um, you got to forgive my my slow brain. <laughs> uh, um, I think of what Mick, as, as an example, Mick West, what he does, where he takes a claim that says this is a UFO, and then he goes and looks for an actual other explanation that seems more probable and and more reasonable. Kenny Biddle does a lot of that as well with his ghost photography people will say this little dot it's it's a it's our grandfather you know who I'm thinking of with that one our grandmother <laughs> with Jeanette Wilson and really what it is is just a, sp a speck of dust that catches the light in the room uh, and it's in the lens light. yeah and you can replicate it right so that's another thing these people can re replicate these things and show that it really isn't supernatural so that's what I would think of as being debunking very good. Good definition. Yeah, the, the, the Australian uh, Psychic Prediction Project essentially turned into that. I mean, we didn't yes. go in with the idea. If the data showed otherwise, yes, that, we would have proved psychic abilities. Yes. We've gone a long way into it. But no, now, so then we produced a large set of data which countered their claims that, oh, yeah, we know how to predict the future and we're always right. Yeah, no. Right. So, so debunking has its value. Let me ask you, if you were a person who believed in, let's say, the ufos some specific like ufo came out and you say to yourself this is this is ufo this is real and you go to your friend who is you one of you guys and they say to you i i i really think this thing is real this looks really amazing look it's done by an air force pilot and it was released by the navy and and how in the heck can you explain that skeptic and then you turn to them and you say, here is a video from Mick West, who's explaining it. Boom. There you go. It's been solved. So <laughs> how does it feel to be the person on the end who's receiving that information? What do you think it feels like to be debunked? Um, the square dance caller who I mentioned before, it, I'll find out because what I did was we didn't have time right then, but I said, I said, I'll send you something on it. And while the next break came up on my phone, I Googled, uh, Skeptoy's episode on Bill Gates conspiracies. Cause I remember he specifically talked about that item of, 
it's ridiculous to believe that there are chips in the vaccine. And I sent it to him and I said, here's my friend, uh, an article on this subject. What do you think? So we'll see what he says when I see him next Sunday. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Wendy's here. We have a small group today, but that's okay. We'll keep, catch you up. Thank so you. We're talking about pre-bunking and debunking. All right. So if you are on the end of being debunked, I don't think it feels good because why oh i feel like you've been wrong yeah go ahead somebody, or at least somebody that you know thinks that your assumption mm -hmm. or your claim is screwed up right. well i don't know i'm looking at his text after i sent it to him he said thanks i'll check it out so we'll see he wants to keep you coming to square dancing christy would you say <laughs> he might ban me um I, I feel like I would I would view the video skeptically because I'm trying to protect my own cognitive biases. So I would be a lot I would be a lot more likely to reject the video if if I hadn't been primed, if it was kind of, you know, a cold sending it, you know. I I would find ways to poke holes in the, That's good. the argument given. That. That's good. I hadn't thought of that, Christy. Good. So Adrian's waving at random people. I don't know who's. Oh, she's. Wendy joined us. Sorry, she's my, my son. Came and I thought, why is she looking down at the ground? Wendy's over here on the right. Oh, <laughs> she's down there for me. <laughs> so, yeah, Wendy, who spoke too soon? I didn't hear the claim. Sorry. Okay, yeah. So, so the thing is, is that when you're approaching somebody who is a, who has come to you and said, "I have this UFO video. Is the best thing I've ever seen." For sure, you skeptics are going to just shudder and and freak out because it's the best evidence possible. And then you turn around and it's like playing one of those card games where you just take the card and you go, boom. You know, it's like, I just trumped you, dude. Back off. Here it is. You can't touch me now. Kind of like, it's like you're, well, I don't think it'd be very respectful because like Wendy said, now you feel like, somebody thinks you're an idiot <laughs> and That's what uh, you know imagine this okay think of this you're in a grocery store you're walking around you cannot find the the aisle that has the cereal in it or whatever and you're just looking up and down you just cannot find the damn aisle you're like where is the freaking cereal and you're standing there and you finally find somebody to help you and you say hey where is the cereal don't you have cereal anymore? Where's the cereal? And the guy goes, you mean the aisle right behind you? Turn around, idiot. <laughs> you know? And you feel like, that's how you feel. You feel like an idiot. And you're like, oh my gosh, it's right there. How did I miss it? But you, you're not going to think nicely of the person. You're not going to have this, wow, they were really helpful. I feel like an idiot. I feel stupid. You. So there's got to be a way of talking to somebody without being like, making them feel stupid about it. Anybody want to give me verbiage on how you would tell somebody nicely where the cereal aisle is? Okay, you want to hear like one of my earliest experiences as a skeptic addressing that? Okay. I, I, my introduction to skepticism came via science fiction. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I, I think a lot of us had that, you know, where we we were reading science fiction and not evaluating whether it was stories about reality or 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 um, or just fiction, a, a form of fiction. But I but once I started attending meetings that I, IG meetings, I realized I better start making that distinction. <laughs> and Brian and I said, well, what if I, somehow the conversation turned to like, what if there really is other planets with life? And, and, and we, and it's possible that we've really been visited by aliens. And Brian Hart said that skeptics don't assume that there is no other life. 
skeptics just want to see the evidence. So the kindest thing that I could say if somebody was trying to show me evidence of a paranormal, what we consider paranormal experience is, well, I would really love to see something that I could believe. Like, you know, that there it's evidence, you know, show me what you got. Cause, and, and I don't know where it would go beyond that, but that's what I'm prepared to say if anybody... <laughs> You're, you're jumping ahead, Wendy, because that's exactly where we're going with this. Roger has his hand up. Yeah, I wanted to say that uh, I don't I don't think you can debunk a conclusion, or at least not most of the time. You can debunk uh, evidence, right? So I have a buddy, one of my best buddies. We go to shows all the time. We've been friends for 25 years. He loves Bigfoot and loves uh, we didn't land on the moon. You know, he, there's just a whole bunch of things that he loves, right? So one, one of these times, he uh, he actually said something about, well, what about these pictures that have two light sources? You know, that means that they were in a studio, right? And I said, well, you know, actually on the moon, that there, there do seem to be two light sources because you can have the sun over here and then you have the earth over here that's so big and so close, it reflects so much light that it actually is a whole other light source, right? So it wouldn't necessarily have to be a studio. It could be that it was just that was taken during that time where the, the earth and the sun and the moon were all in that, that you know, I've never told him that, of course, they landed on the moon, that, that his didn't land on the moon stuff is silly. I, I only have ever said, well, but what about that thing? You know, and how does and how does that go over with him with that approach you take? I mean, we, we keep hanging out and doing okay. shows or whatever. I mean, it, it, he doesn't he doesn't necessarily answer it. You know, uh, he I don't know, some maybe some things he brings up less in the future, you know, whatever. But I mean, I, I think. Uh, Overall, again, what you know, what is the harm? I mean, it doesn't really harm. None of these things are important to his life, you know, to his health. So uh, Sasquatch doesn't change anything. But every now and then he'll say something about that. And I'll say, well, you know, that's possible. But it seems to me like it would be this, you know, uh, that we would see some evidence in this fashion, you know. And right. so it, it, it's never I never say Sasquatch is bullshit or, of course, we, you know, you just you can't say that, but you can address generally the like with the microchips. I mean, how big are microchips? Right. Do do they fit? In, in, are they needle size? How many microchips are needle size? That's just I, if you I mean, say I, it kindly, if you say it kindly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I like yeah. I, I did have a minute with him and I did, in fact, say that uh, basically. Yeah, so, actually, the thing I said was everyone is already carrying tracking devices around with us. And I mentioned the uh, attack on the Capitol. And all those idiots who went into the building had their smartphones active and the, the, they were being tracked. So why would you have to inject this high tech, you know, thing into somebody's body when they're already carrying a tracking device? You're making too much sense. Christy's got her hand. <laughs> I was just thinking about you need to ask if they're open to having a discussion on this because um, usually people feel like I'm bombarding them which they weren't necessarily even open to having a discussion about something that's a deeply held belief. Um, so yeah, you have to like make sure if they even want to talk about it. Good point. Adrian. I agree with that. Yeah, going back to the, how would you direct somebody up a grocery aisle? Yes, no. going back to the question that was asked. <laughs> Adrian Falls, she was always a good student. I know she was. <laughs> uh, it's a teacher in me. Um, it's, I, I think if it was something, well, if you could say, Hey, all you need to do is go down aisle, da, 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 and that's a really difficult thing to find, right? If you kind of say, yeah, this is difficult to understand or difficult. Yeah. I, mean, if you're looking well, at I always it, forget uh, where that is in the store. Cause I keep moving it around, but Oh, it's it, right there now. Yeah, exactly. exactly. There you go. Right. Exactly. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like not easy to find. Yeah. Last time it was there or. Yeah. Uh, or, which in, or even, which in my shop right is true. It hasn't moved. Lots <laughs> of people have trouble finding that. You know, it's a difficult color. Or there's lots of ways you could approach it, I think. I, uh, I remember watching a customer service video that was done in Disneyland. And the person who gets the most questions in Disneyland is the person who's out there cleaning the street. Because they're right there amongst people. You know, they got their little shovel in there or whatever that is. And they're just sweeping up whatever is out there. And they have to have special training in customer service because mm -hmm. they will be asked nonstop all day where the bathrooms are. I mean, they probably get a thousand times where the bathrooms are or where other things are. And they have to be able to stay in the same tone, friendly, 
yeah. after answering that same question a thousand times where the bathrooms are in the kindest way. Oh yeah. I, you know, I guess they would say something like, yeah, you're right. I, so that you just, you get turned around in here. Let's see. Um, it's right over there, you know, or, you know, give them. So, you, so what you're trying to do is you're trying to save face. You're trying to allow the person you're talking to, to save face. But what happens they're, if they're asking you the question and they're in the, in the restroom already? <laughs> Well, in different countries, they have different kinds of restrooms. As I saw when I was in uh, the UK or in Australia, I saw these signs that had, it had these signs up on the wall and it said, do not stand on the toilet seat. And it had, and it was visuals. It had foot, 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 foot things. And it had like a drawing of a person standing and crouching over a toilet seat. And I thought, what in the world is that? And apparently in some Asian countries, that's how you use the bathroom. So they're explaining this in visual. And I thought to myself, all right, okay. So that might be to those people, they may be in the bathroom and they're saying, where this is the bathroom? bathroom? It's just <laughs> that hole in the floor, which is the, is the way the it is in, in Japan. Floor. In some so places. remember, there are a whole lot of people in the world who have completely different experiences. We do. Okay, so we're going to keep moving on because it's a good conversation. Before you do that, Susan, can I just ask a sure. question? I have somebody from training who has just asked me if I can help them with the backwards edit. Is Would you like to stay here or should I just tell them I'll hey, do it? Right? Gail, right? Yeah, she just asked me and I said, go and ask them the cabal. I said, Adrian oh. and Rob are with me right now so you can't bother them. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I have you here and we will use you. And somebody, okay. and let somebody else step up because I'm sure somebody will be able to help okay. fill out or I will afterwards. Okay. Let's go, move on. After before this, and before way, we get too far, I want to correct a uh, something that Roger uh, believes is true, which isn't. Uh, so the actual reason there's more than one light source is because of the reflection is off the other astronauts' very white spacesuit. Okay, yeah. Roger, yeah. how does it feel to be corrected on, <laughs> with, with the, <laughs> with the, uh, with the, on video? Been, I've been more academic than anything else most of my life, and I'm generally grateful. For that. Yeah. updated so I'm, I'm not really generally i'm not really one of those people who has to be right about a thing or that's my face or whatever i just i'm here with my best but, model yeah but that's good my model then, but in uh, fact what you said is often repeated and it's online so people see that and then they repeat it and it's understandable right, like, oh it's the earth but it's not so, so the, thing I mean, is, it's the same it's the same principle right it's just a different object and so yeah, yeah. right it, so yeah. rogers rogers answer was the better one <laughs> <laughs> to his friend because it was more of a I don't always have the right answer but here's what I think it might be let's figure it out together kind of answer and, and it might get him to go to google it and say oh okay well it's not the earth but it's a spacesuit but ah okay but it's not Rob's it's not it's answer, not a, it's not a light in the studio so that's Rob's good. answer is more of a debunking answer like here's the right answer and I, I'm and sorry, aerospace engineer, I couldn't resist. <laughs> what I'm trying to get through to you guys is you got to watch how you respond to these people because you want to encourage them to continue coming to you whenever they have problems or whenever they have questions about weird things. And that's the whole idea. Homosexuality is not pedophilia. Pedophilia tolerance is not pressing. Oh, is this a, a, a creed? Oh, I hear a kitty. Whose kitty is that? Oh, no, those, no, those no, are the no. equivocations that I grew up with. That, that's oh. I did, just the last a, a small list, the only one I could find right now of, of the words I didn't actually understand because I grew up in religious circumstances. I mean, I remember growing up when I finally got to be older and I realized the word atheist, what that meant. And, you know, I, I think I, when I found out what it was, it was equivalent to Satanism, you know, it was, I mean, so yeah. Okay. So moving on. Let's go to our first, our case study. So I have one case study for you guys tonight. And that's all I have for you is this one case study. So what you're going to do is you're going to imagine that you have a friend. Ah, kitty. I have two sleeping kitties here and there. They, are. they could care less right now. Uh, you have a friend or a coworker that is coming to you. Now, you know, this person is a person has magical thinking ideas, right? So what we're going to practice, first off, is how to have a conversation with each other that, okay, so since I've got five of you, 
I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to make two breakout rooms and we're going to do this really quickly. And you're going to go to the breakout rooms. And here's your, here's your mission. Breakout room one, which is Christy, Roger, and Wendy. Your idea is to come up with things that are not to do when you're having a conversation. What are the things you do not do? And then Adrian and Rob, you're going to be in the other breakout room and you're going to come out with the things you do say. And I'm talking about verbal. I'm talking about physical. What is it you do? So that's that's your mission. That's all I'm going to tell you. you got like two minutes, so go. Hey, hey, I'm not clear. What, what's, the, what's the circumstance starting this off? Your friend is coming to you with some weird things. What, okay. what is the thing in your case, yours and right. that you definitely... So he's specifically coming to us. We're not just going to him and yeah, possibly talking. Yeah, things. Okay. Go. And I'm going to close those rooms on them so that they have two minutes to get their behinds back. So let's see, since you're watching and I don't feel like pausing this. So what we're trying to do is we're really trying to bring uh, people together to interact with each other, to hopefully become group leaders that will go out and do these kinds of workshops in person, maybe two groups, you know, maybe 15, 20 people. They could do them in a library or, a, you know, a just a community room, someplace that's very simple that they'll be able to come back and do um, these kinds of workshops. That's my goal is to make people start thinking about how we talk to people, plus how to introduce workshops um, that you can customize them in any way you want. This one is the one I've decided to go with and then I have two more coming up, but there are other kinds of workshops you could do. Um, you could do a workshop on alternative medicine. You could do a workshop on uh, cold reading. You could do a workshop on UFOs, but it needs to be defined so that it's not just a dis open discussion. It needs to have some sort of like sort of lessons and some kind of um, not just lessons, but um, case studies and uh, practicing good practices of how to speak to somebody and, and um, have conversations with them. But I think that we can have lots of different kinds of uh, workshops if people come up with them. So this is this is just the first one um, today. So thank you for watching this video if you're here watching. This is the first one and I'm learning as I go about what works and what's not going to work and how to, how to work with a small group. I mean, if I get a group of 30 or 40 people, it's going to obviously be a totally different environment. So they're coming back right now. So I'm going to have them give me their do's and don'ts. And I broke them out into a group of two. So okay, very good. So Roger, you were in yeah. the group, you were in the group that told me that it was supposed to be deciding what was not to do. Give me some not phrases or or I, I, I typed I typed down everything that I could really quickly. Uh the first thing probably I think the smartest thing is don't say you're wrong. Just, you know, that's that's never going to start anything off. So don't lose patience. No negative emotions. Don't make fun of anybody. Uh, you need to, you know, in interrupt. You don't need to not interrupt. You know, the, the failure there is not listening. So, um, and then there's probably no good trying to express your credentials somehow to raise yourself as to appeal to authority, you know, on your own, right, in reverse. Uh, yeah, I was thinking that could be um, both educationally or like intellectually or morally, that you're morally on a higher plane. Ooh. She's got deep thoughts. Okay, Rob and Adrian, would you come up with for definite actions? Um, I think you could say that's an interesting issue, belief, et cetera. Let's explore more. Uh, ask more questions to make sure you, for clarification, make sure you're talking about the same thing. So, uh, and the last thing uh, that Rob came up with, which I thought was really good, what could you hear, what could you hear or see that would actually change your mind? And if there's nothing that will change your mind, it's going to be hard to have a discussion. Wendy, can you give me any verbal, uh, not verbal, uh, physical don'ts? 
show me a physical don't you don't what is it you don't do with somebody who's trying to talk to you about something really cool. show me a show me a physical just n not turn your back on them <laughs> that would probably be a good one <laughs> i was trying to think of of what i um um of what circumstance I could picture this happening and it would be an anti-vaxxer. Yeah, you might, your eyes would probably go and your mouth would open. <laughs> yeah. And you start, start taking a few steps backwards. Oh, you weren't here to hear the story that I told about what happened just this last weekend when, when our uh, square dancer caller came over to me and said, he's not so sure that there is not tracker chips in the current vaccines. Look at Wendy, look at Wendy, your eyes go. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say Rob? Did you <laughs> I mean so how do you yeah so you gotta really remember that your emotions you can cross your arms you can back up you can go oh no way dude <laughs> or you know, really yeah. look, la things. laugh out loud you roll your eyes, what I did. like oh my god or don't do like my friend did who actually went into up to a guy who was uh an anti-vaxxer who was protesting outside his apartment building and he went right up to his face and told him to get lost and to go and protest somewhere else <laughs> well i don't know that might be kind of it i don't know if i'd want to get too close to him because if they're not vaccine yeah, yes, his, that, his wife was horrified when she found out so oh it's scary okay so so you guys got your he was really mad right this is right in the middle of covid and and oh. when vaccines were coming out and I and take the his picture and say this guy yeah. I, I remember so not that. not the he even says it was not a good thing to do but boy he felt good about it at the time. so can i ask a answer or not which is exactly what i did frankly because i've never heard anybody in real life say that and i left i put my hand on his <laughs> chest and i bent over and i left and i'm sure that did not go over well <laughs> um i i it's hard so you 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 got to be aware of it because sometimes these come at you be, without you don't have yeah. Like I would Rob never said, expect somebody to tell said me this that. This person that I walked up to him and said it. You don't have a preparation for it. Yeah. I'm no better than anybody else. Let me tell you, I'm running, I'm facilitating this, but it doesn't mean I, I'm perfect at it. I make all these mistakes all the time. So I'm, I, you, you just kind of got to remember that if you want to continue having a conversation with the person, you probably should watch your body language as well, too. And <laughs> Maybe break out in a fit of coughing or something so that you have a chance to regroup or sneezing fit or like, oh my God, I've got to pee. I'll be right back. <laughs> Run up to the bathroom and oh my God. I'm bad at hiding my emotions and things like this. I, I actually got taken to test by my supervisor once because she was the, the company had rolled out this thing about microaggressions. Oh, yeah. That, Right in the workplace are bad, right? And when she said it, I rolled my eyes. That's a microaggression, Rob. That's right there. That's a microaggression, Rob. <laughs> That's okay, actually so not very micro. <laughs> that would be a microaggression. Macro. <laughs> okay, so here's here's what we're gonna do now. Okay, now that you have your do's and your don'ts, right? This is a practice. Uh, did anybody do the reading assignments? By the way, I didn't read anything. The hair, the hair dryer stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Did you read I, read I read it a long time ago, yeah, but I don't I remember any of it today. Yeah, the old, there were old old episodes. In fact, one of them is, was, wow, that's really good. And I, I reposted it to my Facebook page. But yeah, I reread them. Okay. So you don't have to, but you might when you're all done. So there's one Skeptoid article in there I put in there. And it's I think it's relevant to, to all of us is that how to be a skeptic and still remain friends with people. <laughs> oh, I meant to read that. I'm sorry. I that's, did, I, that's a really important one. He's got a lot of wisdom. This guy's been dealing, Brian Dunning has been dealing with this world in every niche everywhere. So I think it's got some great wisdom in there and how to approach people and talk to them. Okay. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to give you a scenario picture in your mind, this fictional friend of yours, or if you have one that's really in there, and your friend has come to you, and because you have had kind interactions with them in the past, they have said to you that I'm gonna, I have this question about something, and I'm gonna go to my friend and tell you it and see what you think. Okay, that put that in your mind. You don't know anything about UFOs and hair dryers or burns or anything like that. This is just your friends coming to you and saying, so you know what? I had noticed the last week, I had this really strange burn on my skin. It looked really weird. And 
I can't figure out how I got it. It was just so strange and it's faded now, but um, I'm going to show you a picture of what, what it looked like. And so here, I'm going to show you a picture of what it looked like. So this is all, you know, they're, they're giving you this, this hypothetical, here's my phone. Here's what the burn looked like right here. Okay. So it looked like you can picture one of these, oops, like it's got the circle. Can you guys see that? Okay. Here's one on the knee. Here's one that's just in the skin. It's got like sort of an outline of a circle with lines through it or something. Here's one that's on the shoulder. Here's just like five lines in a row. Okay. So your friend has showed you that on their phone. They said, look, it's gone now and it doesn't hurt anymore. It's, it's completely gone off my body, but I got this thing. And I can't figure out what the heck it is. Okay. The only, now you're going to go and discuss this really quickly again, too. Now, the only thing that you know is that your friend is one of these people who has a bit of an imagination. So you know that your friend may come back with some kind of weirdy thing and not just some common, like a bug bite or something, you know? So you're going to go to discuss this again, two minutes, and um, uh, it's going to be, um, um, okay, good. So it's going to be just that. So you're going to have a fictional conversation with your friend and you're going to come back and give me your best practices of what you, what you said. So go. So, but this is assuming that we know about this nope. solution that's been nope. proposed. You don't know anything. It's all they've come up to you and told you that. Go to your rooms. Go talk about it. That's all they've said. I got this weird burn. Okay, then I'm gonna close the room so that way I have a two minute thing. Okay, so here's where we're at. Now I'm trying to get these people to go through this fictional scenario. Uh, they have this imaginary friend. Well, they don't have an imaginary friend. They're picturing a friend who has come to them and said, I have this strange burn. I don't know what it is. Here's a picture of it on the show until you're on your phone. And what do you think it is? And you don't know anything about anything beyond that. And, but you do know that the person you're talking to is somebody who tends to be kind of paranormal minded and you won't be surprised if they come back with something kind of weird. So let's see how they do. Do, does our, our test, these um, five, my five have some sort of um, good examples of how they're gonna to talk to this person with using their best do's and don'ts, or don't use their don'ts, but using their best do's, how to have a conversation without, without rolling your eyes, without making them feel stupid, without making belittling them or anything of the sort. So I'm gonna be having more of these workshops. I have two more already done um, that are coming up in, uh, I don't know when you're listening to this video, but I'll have more. And I think that um, they're kind of on the same field of how to talk to somebody and become the person that people come to whenever you have, when they have questions and everything hiccups all of a sudden. So we're trying to um, look for leadership in our community who may want to do these kind of same exact workshops I have right now. I have all the notes written on a different screen and um, I'm happy to give them off as well, give them to somebody as well as give them the uh, the slides that I've made. I've made it as simple as possible. Of course, they can be adapted. Oh, here they come. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Who was to tell me their, their best? What did you What did you do when you were talking to your imaginary friend there? Your fr not your imaginary friend, because that's not, that's a whole nother world. <laughs> who, who wants to go for for group one? And, and I don't know if you know which. Group so, so you switched us up, right? You know that. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I know that. If Zoom did something weird randomly. Okay, go ahead. Who who was who was group one now? I don't even remember what group I was in. It was. Was that our group? That's our group. Um, we talked about. Excuse me for eating and talking at the same time. We we talked about focusing the attention to how, like, as we're growing a little bit older, we don't always remember when we bumped ourselves. 
and got a, a burn or a, a bump or a bruise. Also the um, focusing attention back to the biological issue and away from the UFO issue. Okay, it sounded like they were going that way. And um, and about experiences in the past when each of us has um, had mystery bruises and mystery bleeding and, and burns and that you don't remember getting. And um, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. <laughs> And um, and then also I, what I just have had this experience this past year is boy you haven't lived until you've you got you're taking blood thinners <laughs> and, and like every time you turn around you've got like some new bruise down your entire arm and you know bleeding from just bumping your shins. Okay, good, is, good. No, no eye rolling in your group. No, fast panic breathing. Two minutes is very short. Maybe we oh, need. I don't minutes. care. I want to get you through this. Okay, the other group. What were your? What did you guys come up with? Um, I was thinking how like, it's okay to acknowledge that, like you know, if they're cueing that they're scared or a little bit weirded out where it came from, it's okay to acknowledge that, like, oh yeah, that's you know, that's totally normal to like be unsettled about not remembering that you got how you got a burn, especially. Um, but then, then you can use humor, you know, like, oh, maybe the, the aliens are coming to get you or something to like make light of the situation. Um, and and I don't know, try to relate to the person. That you're not necessarily making fun of them or their beliefs, but trying to make light and of something that could be scary. Good, good, good point. Okay, very good. So now <clears throat> your friend is your friend is comfortable with you with whatever you just told them and now they're just going to unburden themselves a little bit further to you okay so now they're going to tell you this story but they didn't know what was going on with that burn so they did a google search and they came up with this video right and in this video there is this guy with this french accent he's really 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 like professor like and he, he was at this conference and he was talking about these, these, these burns and uh, that he thinks that it's likely that because it's happening all over the world to people and that it's probably aliens are doing it and it's space aliens and they're, they're doing this. So that's now what your friend is telling you. So now we've escalated from just, you know, blood thinners and, and bumping into something kind of burn, uh, burn to they're enacting some sort of video they've seen that is very strange. And now you're, you're going to have to talk to them without rolling your eyes, using your do words, keeping in mind you want them to come back to you and talk about this again. And don't use words that are you know those bad words that are like well you know try to find words that are common with whatever you think they have so we're going to do this again <laughs> it's kind of fun i like this i'm getting to use something i don't usually use recreate okay so go again i'll give you a little more time in this one not much more Okay, so I'm mixing them up using the breakout feature. And I think that if you're doing this in person with a group of people in a workshop sitting, you have to make a decision. Do I want to mix the groups up and move them dynamics, you know, put people in different places or just leave them in the spot they're in so they can just turn to their neighbors and start because you're on a time clock. You want to get these things through in two hours uh, or less, this whole workshop. Well, that's why I'm making everything so simple. But um, so you decide if it's a better idea to move people around or to just leave them in the spot they're in, because, you know, some people don't like to move around and they, they have to move all their stuff and everything like that. So yeah, I'm giving a tiny bit more room. So I'm going to hit the close all rooms button so that we're done. Now I'm going to pull up a slide I have for the next one. 
And I have one, two, two, I have three slides. Four slides I'm going to show you, I think. And let me see what my notes say here. Pause this for a second. Okay, according to my notes, what's next is we're going to do two slides and we're going to talk about the argument from authority. It's a whole different look on me whenever I've got that screen turned to a darker thing. And first a discussion, then we're going to go to the slides. I want to stay on time. Wendy comes back with a smile. That always makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have no idea who's in what group anymore. We were laughing. Okay, so one, one group give me, what did you talk to them about? I'm looking for, I'm actually looking for something and see if who, who I wish I could give a gold star to the person who, who comes up with it. So go ahead. You do it, Adrian. Well, it, I, I like one of the things, one of the reasons we were laughing is because Wendy said, well, if somebody came up with, to that with me, I probably would just say, wow, your explanation is sure a lot more interesting yeah. than my explanation. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it is serious, right? Like it really would be. So using humor was sort of what we were discussing, but not in a condescending way, and then exploring more. And what and we were kind of thinking, because there were some assumptions there that we had to make. Is this the, did they kind of go down the YouTube rabbit hole and find that one first uh, or ones like that first? And if that's the case, you could ask them, you know, let's look at some other options. You know, did you look at other options? And if you haven't, maybe we could explore them together. But if they have, but that was the one they gravitated to, what makes this one the one you think is real? Why do you think that's the, the real one? That's that's all we had time to come up with. Yes, those are good. Okay, <laughs> next group, what did you guys come up with? I like what Roger had to say. Go ahead, Roger, you've been volunteered. <laughs> um, yeah, well, so I, I, I suggested first that you might actually criticize videos in general by saying deep fake that might be a thing that backfires though the real the real thing is to just say you know uh that i mean that's that's interesting that's uh it's you know kind, kind of not really something i'd heard before but a, a thing to do when you get to this point where you're like oh my god this could be amazing thing that i've just discovered is to simply google whatever that thing is with you know hoax or debunk or whatever to, to look at the criticism of the thing and then, and then once you've read the criticism of the thing, you, you get a better view of whether or not you should accept one or the other or whatever. And so, you know, I, I'm not, I, I mean, privately in my head, I'm not going to do the homework. They can do the homework. But then, you know, was, hey, once you've read that, come talk to me about it again. Tell me what you think about the criticism versus this thing, you know. And then, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, that ought to slow them down. And, and again, it's it's not. It's not kicking, you're not completely destroying the chair, you're just kicking a leg out. <laughs> I like your I like your I like that very much. Okay, so the phrase I'm looking for is can I get a link to that video so I can watch it and I'll get back to you. <laughs> because that was, this yeah. is something you should have a long conversation with. But no, no, you guys came up with some great stuff. But I was yeah. assuming that we watched it. <laughs> well, yeah, because you have I actually it. was also. <laughs> yeah, because most of my conversation like that happened over, you know, a computer and they sent the link first and that's when they said, hey, look at this. This is what I said. Well, yeah, probably. But just, but that is what you would say is, <laughs> of course, all the other things you guys said, but you really want to say, well, I don't know what you've seen, but let me check it out and I'll tell you what I think. Because if you tell somebody, hey, I'm sure that's that's a bunch of BS, then the video, the, what you're saying to them is, the video that you saw that you thought was so realistic is not because you're an idiot. I mean, <laughs> that's what you're sending them. If you immediately debunk a video you haven't even seen or you haven't even looked mm. into it at all. So you don't want to give the impression because remember, you're trying to continue the conversation. So now I'm going to show you two screenshots. Okay. 
So this is your friend has gone and um, has seen this video. So let's talk about these two screenshots. This is the first one. This is the beginning of the video. And somebody tell me what it is you see here. Wendy, tell me what you see here. What is your impression? It, 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 um, I'm reading. Um, authoritative author holding books. Contact in the desert. This is the beginning of the video that they had. So this is the title screen. Okay, a global phenomenon, recent close encounters in Europe and Latin America. So definitely this is a person who, like this is the authority, is is claim, making a claim that there has been contact. Okay, good. Anybody else got something else that you want to say? My, my thought is why are these video producers using a font that's so hard to read? <laughs> Star Trek font. That's a Star Trek font. Roger says the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Me as a young person, the the font and you know, and it not being like a professional headshot, the, these are red flags. Like this is this is like some boomer shit, is what I think. <laughs> you are a kid. Thanks, I'm Chris, a do you boomer. Think you make me feel old. I didn't pick up on it. Did you guys are actually the aliens. So, there's, a, so, there's a UFO floating back here. No, that is wait. I have to say to Chris, so not so not being a boomer, you probably don't remember Heaven's Gate. And this was what their web, web page looked like. At yeah. least that, that it did. And and those were the, that was the UFO cult. They all killed themselves. They thought they were beaming their souls to a UFO following a comet. They, they and, the, and the font was something like this. So yeah. I also want to point yeah. out this man, Mark. So I did this present workshop to my my group in Salinas, and Mark said, "Well, don't you know who that is?" And I'm like, "No, who is it?" He says he's the guy who who uh, the story Close Encounters of the Third Kind is based on. He was huge. He was a big deal. And, and you know, no, so this is a man that. of authority. He has a whole movie. Uh, Jacques Vallée. I, I think I think that's an E-E. V-A-L-L-E. -E. Yeah. E -E, I'm Ballet. skeptical of Mark's uh, explanation. I'm going to have to look at it. <laughs> Something like I that. I mean, I saw that movie in real time when it came out. I don't remember anything about it being a real incident with somebody connected. Well, it, it, could, was, it was. It could be right. Voted but it or something like that. But there's there's something. Okay, now here's the next screen. Well, it, it also says like Europe and Latin America, like it, yeah. these things don't well, get recognized in, in North America or Asia. No one else, only in Latin America. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's your next slide. This is a, screen, a, a screenshot from this man, Jacques, speaking. Jacques Vallée. Okay, so Jacques Vallée. So it is a large audience. You can't see the audience, but it is, it feels like or sounds like a thousand people in the audience. So he's he's got this so tell me what it is that you think about this screenshot of this man he's not a mac user <laughs> uh, i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing <laughs> if you go up in your esteem or down in your esteem yes yes cufflinks i was thinking the same oh, thing there right. roger he's got that? cufflinks with a dress shirt and then it looks like a a safari vest <laughs> <laughs> he's prepared for dinner with the queen or a safari with the king or meeting the aliens in the desert yes. <laughs> he's, he's got enough uh resources or or money to have an auditorium like this doesn't feel like your public library yeah no yeah you're right very good good ob observations so so think about that to your friend in your friend's view that your friend is seeing this they're seeing this look the um, the audience the 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 authority this man is given he gets all kinds of questions you guys really should i put the video up on um, the links and you should probably try to give it a, a view i got about 20 minutes in so it's a it's an interesting thought and the q a happens he, it's an excerpt from one of his lectures and it and the q and the not q and on, the Q and A afterwards yeah. is you're not going to believe the Q and A because you feel like you want to ask a question and you're going okay so somebody's getting up there to ask a question and it seems like it's okay they're going to say what the hell and they don't so <laughs> anyway after we're all done you might want to check this out so now let's go to this keeping in mind that the argument from authority is a real thing yeah. these people really do your friend 
doesn't know any better. And we make these judgments about people all the time too. I mean, we, we, we cold read people all, uh, that's how we get through life. We make judgments about the person in front of us trying to find a I think mm -hmm. what was surprising to me was the data was from 2013 through 2022 or 2020 or something like that. So it's not, this isn't from like the seventies or something. This is current. Yeah. So that, that. Okay. So now we're going to go to, now we're going to get a little weirder. Okay. So you've talked to your friend, right? And okay. So your friend has, has now got this idea. So what were your guys' conclusions? Give me your conclusions of what you talked to your friend about now. Who wants to go? After watching the video. Oh, oh yeah. I forgot. I forgot. Okay. No, I skipped it. No, you're right. You're on track. Okay. Okay. So we're going to the next slide. Thank you. Here's the next <laughs> slide. Now you, now you're watching the video. Okay. You've gone home and you sat down with your bourbon and you're gone. All right. Yeah, are you supposed to be sharing your screen, Susan? I will in a second. So I will uh, share it in a second. So you're sitting down with your bourbon and, and here's what you see on this video. Okay. Now keep in mind, we're only going to discuss part of this, but this is what your friend saw and thought was good evidence. So here you go. You can see that, right? Yeah. Okay. So as you see, this guy is saying that there was this, ah, did I hear you, Rob? Did I hear it? <laughs> You're not to, that is microaggressions, Rob. Or macro, according to was, those were macro, yeah. <laughs> Mark, if we can hear them all the way from New Jersey. I'm cooking. I can hear that, and I'm not even sharing the screen. I mean, I'm sharing the screen, so you're a little itty bitty thing right now. But absolutely. So now this guy is saying it's it's aliens, because what else could it possibly be, right? <laughs> well, wait a minute, because what I'm seeing is on on this slide on the left hand side there's a picture with a old burn scar like maybe a, a couple of oh, 10 days uh burn uh, old burn scar um the witness notices a mark on her hip it fades in about a week okay oh 10 days or a week okay and then a year later or no less than a year later um witness i can't see the whole everything that's on that list the witness contacted mm, September 2018 and July 2017. She had been driving, been with, driving her with her daughters and another girl, teenagers. I, I'm confused about what do these two things have to do with each other? Well, it makes sense in the video. <laughs> well, but I'm not watching the video. I'm only seeing this one slide okay, right now. So, so it's a bright early afternoon. There's a very large gray yeah, disc but... flew slowly low over the car and the mother gave the phone to the daughters in the back seat and said, take a picture of that. But is this and the same person? Response. Yes. So, so this the, person has come to Jacques and said, I had this burn right. mark on my hip. Here's the picture of it. And then eight months or whatever later. The same thing happened to her. No, not the same thing. There was there was a UFO. No, over this the other thing car. happened to her. It wasn't clear it was the same person even because this oh, is yeah, multiple, multiple witness case. All right. Same person. Okay. So this is, well, I'm, I'm breaking it down for you because you're not watching the video right yeah, now, yeah, but yeah. this is what it is. The same person came to Jacques and put two and two together that there is an alien following me and that burn mark must have been created by an alien. She's putting together two different things that one well, also, a burn. Yeah, that my, oh, didn't know what it was. The thing that's really confusing is the thing with the picture taken with cell phone to your sex is at the bottom of the right list, which it should be on the left. If the left one's talking about the, the burn mark, which is that's what's weird. Because, like, are, did they take a picture of the very large gray disc that flew loose over the car? Because that's what yeah, the picture taken. Well, they do phone. further in the, the video. And there, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna share that with you right now. All but right, but so that's what they're talking about there. They're, they took a picture of the flying saucer right. with a two year old Samsung. Yes. Okay. Okay. And and he gives all the details of it being a, a bright afternoon, and that she she has witnesses with their kids are in well, the I'd car. I'd like to see I'd like to see that picture. How come they're not showing? Well, that you'll have to watch the video, won't you? 
because I'm not going to show it to you. <laughs> um, it gets really interesting because remember, this is just your friend, right? Okay, so now we're, and then here's the next one. Here's the next slide. All right, this is also on the video. So these are the different patterns. So Jacques has been collecting these stories from people. And not only are they telling him about the burns and showing pictures of the burns, but they're also connecting it to UFO experiences they've had. So he's seeing a large pool of people who have these burn marks, who also have some sort of UFO experience. So he's putting them together to mean that they are UFO related, okay? So now your friend is watching this video and she's thinking her mind or he's thinking in their mind, I had this burn mark. Now I probably should start looking for uh, situations that happened to me in my life that could be paranormal related to a UFO. Like maybe they saw some something in the sky or um, or something of the sort, right? It's so, so funny. Talk about bad English. They disappear in one or two weeks. When I first read that, I thought it was the women that disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Okay. So think about that, that this is now your friend is giving you more. And now you've watched the video and you're a little bit like, okay. So a little bit further in the video, what you're going to find out is that he's going to mention that Somebody suggested it might be a hairdryer that is creating the burn, okay? So he comes right out and says, I had people tell me that it might be a hairdryer. And then he immediately disrupts it and says, no, because there's too many different examples. There's too many different kinds of things. And of course you would feel a burn and you would know immediately that you were burned by a hairdryer. One of the things he does mention is that it's almost all women who have this burn and um, somebody suggested to him that maybe the UFO people are zeroing in on women who are walking down the road and they're zapping them for some reason. But then he says, no, because sometimes the burns appear on places that your clothing would cover up. I don't know why you would have burn marks on your thigh, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'd be thinking about that. <laughs> But actually, that's a good question, because I haven't seen even the stuff I quickly read. I didn't notice that. Where is the data on where on the bodies are these marks? Well, he's hearing stories of, of stuff. And all your friend knows is what he's repeating. OK, so I'm going to send you to your room and you're going to discuss how now that you've seen the video and you've heard that your friend thinks it's UFO related. And the only information you have is what I've just told you right now. How are you going to continue this conversation with your friend without rolling your eyes, without crossing your arms, without deep sighs, no microaggressions? How are you going to continue being that person so that when they are at a point where they're not going to get vaccinated because they think there's microchips in there, you want them to come back and have that conversation with you about the microchips? This seems silly but you still need to be able to have that conversation with them so that they can come back and talk to you about those really crazy things that, that are gonna be harmful. So here you go. You guys are doing good. <laughs> I don't know where am I at on my talk? So let's pause this for a second. Okay, so here's where we are. I'm trying to there I'm I'm pushing the teams, the group, into more and more um discussions with their friend, how to have these conversations. So what I'm looking for when they come back are positive um suggestions, allowing them to save face. You want your friend to save face so that you can continue this conversation with them about these strange things. So um, let's see how they do. It's been interesting. So uh, two more video, two more workshops I have. The one that's, that's I'm going to do probably next week after this that you should be able to find on my YouTube channel since you're obviously watching this on my YouTube channel or Facebook. 
is on the Mandela effect. And I have readings for the Mandela effect. And we're going to read a Skeptical Inquirer article and a um, back to the same kind of discussion of how to have conversations with people and do's and don'ts and to be the person that people come to whenever they have questions about weird things. And um, the last workshop that I have already designed right now is on luck. And and that follows Richard Weissman's article on, on luck. Um, he did a, wrote a book on it and did a 10-year research on it. And so that's my um, third lesson workshop. I'll see if if I decide to continue having more and more workshops, but hopefully you find these interesting and that you uh, want to attend one and possibly run one. Um, here they come. Yeah, okay. I, I, I try to use that a lot on my friend Dan Adrian and it never worked. What's more okay. likely? Yeah. So. Yeah. Probably let's still hear. Protect. Let's hear. Now I've I've got some feedback from whenever I've done this the last time I did this thing, and I am trying to think of some of the stuff that. Mm. Let's see if you can add to. It. Well, I, I said my inclination was to use Occam's razor, and and, and I always said, well, don't use the word Occam's razor, but you see, you know, say what is more likely that you know teenagers lied about this ufo they took a photo of and that somebody backs into a hairdryer and doesn't remember it and that women have hair dryers in a large proportion compared to men or aliens are all over the place doing this only to women and putting weird marks on their body which has no repercussions so i completely forgot to include the story about the ufo mm -hmm. i was like totally focused on the the blow dryer and um and that it was and i said i said i thought that i would offer to come and look at their blow dryer with them and, and see what it looked like and see whether the the metal part matched their well, but the, the burn is gone now so that was years ago. So you could you could volunteer to do it to yourself. You could volunteer she's to do it. Yeah, she she somebody did. Actually somebody did burn them in this recording. Uh, the, yeah, they did test it and they, they felt like they got exact marks just like it. And mm -hmm. it definitely could have been some, you know, iron rather than uh, you know, aliens. So is it likely to burn yourself and not remember it? With a curling iron or a hair dryer kind of thing? Women, have you had that happen? You wouldn't remember it. <laughs> I've, I've seen I, it. I, I feel certainly like, had, sorry, go ahead, Brendy. <laughs> I feel like, uh, like it, you could, you could attribute it to like static, you know, like your hair can get kind of staticky when you're blow drying your hair. So you could feel a zap or maybe you're wearing slippers on a fuzzy rug or something. So you may have not attributed it to your blow dryer touching your neck or whatever. Okay. We were talking about it is weird how we often do get bruises and even cuts, as Adrian said, that you, you bled and you don't know where that came from. But if you are UFO minded, you're looking for a connection and you're likely to yeah. attribute that to. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is going down the path of, of the this, this logical fallacy, which I point out because my friend Dan uses it, which is called countless counterfeits. It's like no matter what, how many things you debunk or show other evidence for, there are always other things that know, but you haven't disproved that one. And even if every single thing he knows, you've debunked, but there are other things you don't know about that he still believes in, and you can't debunk because he didn't even mention them. So it's like there's countless counterfeits, and they can't all be wrong is the thing, right? All of these reports can't be wrong, and you can't possibly debunk all of them, therefore I believe them. That's well, a problem. you got to start somewhere, and you're trying to problem. just put something in there Mm -hmm. in their in their brain to give them the little bit of a uh, push towards maybe you know continuing the conversation or maybe going to looking at the research ship anybody else have anything really good that they that they in your conversations about this it, you just have to be really delicate because having you know more and more anecdotal evidence can be really powerful you know, if you feel like you're part of a group, that's all experience the same thing. That's the countless counterfeits thing, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would like I would like to throw in here though that uh, me coming out of Christianity, growing up in evangelical Christianity, 
that I, I had to hear things over and over again. I had to, I had to weaken this argument and then weaken that argument and then weaken that argument. And I mean, I, you know, I had the fear of hell. I had the community, I had several things pushing me motivations to not believe the things, the new things that I heard to not unbelieve the things that I had believed. And so it took, it took a little bit here and a little bit there. And I mean, I, I, I guess the countless counterfeits wasn't exactly my problem. Ultimately, I got to a point where there were enough, you know, tears there uh, that that it all kind of collapsed, or at least it started to fall down pretty quickly. Um, I think one of the most powerful uh, things in, in driving what humans believe is Fox Mulder's poster. I want to believe. Mm -hmm. Right. Whether that's that you're in a religion and you don't want to stop believing what you already believe, or my friend Dan, who, if you take this away from me, Rob, I got nothing to live for. And so, so he doesn't want to think that he's wrong about these things because it would affect his, what he sees as, you know, his, his how he thinks about himself, uh, you know, and that's a problem. So I guess where I'm going with that is, yeah, so we're doing these exercises and this might work on somebody, but it might also not work on someone else just because of personality differences. Right? Uh, what you're trying to do is you want to allow them to save face. Yeah. So yeah. you need to allow, find a way of making it so that you are not necessarily telling them, you're not debunking it, you're helping them figure it out. And you're helping them find a way of understanding it, but you're doing it in a humorous or a nice or non-condescending way of saying, wow, that is really weird, right? I wonder why it's yeah, only happening I think with it. Uh, for me, what's more of a motivation or the thing that I run into more is what Rob, Robert was, or sorry, what Roger was saying about fear mongering and that these real fears and this anxiety is what drives people to do. Like, is this person, you know, like, do they feel invaded that, that, or do they, you know, is their sense of self feel, what's the word I'm trying to say? You, you understand what I'm saying that you know a foreign being came into their bedroom at night and touched them like that can feel really invasive or intrusive and the same thing is true with like you know moms and the fear mongering around you know medical or um food and i think it, there's just like a lot of fear and misinformation christy's making a really good point you guys think about it from the perspective of the person who thinks okay there's two one is I feel really special because the aliens have coming and burning me. It must mean something like I'm special or whatever, or this is terrifying. How am I going to sleep at night? How am I going to, what about my kids? Are they next? Are they, you know, um, you know, the idea that you, that somebody is invading your house and you can't, they get through locked doors and they, they got the Zappo Ray or something to you. So Trademark. you may approach it in that way of, wow this is very scary if real let's think about this kind of conversations with them yeah. so i think being wow, a safe place out. for being a safe place for people to express their anxieties because even if it's not real their anxieties are very real to them or their delusions are very real to them and that's if if you care about and love this person that's not you don't want them to have to live with these fears and in, in their life so coming at it from compassion from compassion and continuing the conversation, but maybe we could try to figure this out. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. it'll make some sense now. So here's your next scenario. You have been told you've, after you've watched this video, you went and Googled it and you found Mick West's article. Okay. The one that you may or may not have read. And in Mick's, what, Mick West's article, he debunks this, right? He shows you the slides with all the, with the, all the stuff on it. He talks about how he's, he did tests. Uh, they burned things. They, he, he measured the temperature on the front of the, of the, the hair dryers. He looked at all kinds of different hair dryers. Um, he put it out to Metabunk, which is the website he runs. That's kind of like a forum for all things weird, like chemtrails, uh, UFOs, and a lot of that kind of stuff. He, he doesn't do the he doesn't do like medical claims or anything like that, but it's more of the 9-11 and, and those conspiracies. So now you've found this article and you've read it. So you want to tell your friend, 
but you don't want to just hand it to them and say, here's the answer, you idiot. How could you not figure that out? You have to find a way of saying it to your friend that this is probably the answer. So you want to guide them to this answer, but you don't necessarily want to just hand the hand the video to them. I mean, hand the article to them because first off, they may not be receptive. And secondly, it's a way of not allowing them to say face. They're going to feel like, well, I guess I could have figured that out. Or they're not going to even want to look at it at all. So now I want you to talk about that really quick. I'm going to show you another screenshot. Um, so this is the screenshot that you found in the in the article from, this is a screenshot he puts up. And then there's this is the article that you've just seen, uh, something like this on McWest. I just went through and I found, I just cut out screenshots. So you can see the pattern on the front of the, the hair dryer matches the burn which matches this drawing so those are your examples right there so you have this information because you've read the article Mick West has given you you're you're trying to figure out how do I how do I get this to my friend without um appearing to just belittle their thoughts how do I do this in such a way that isn't um it isn't like that. So here, go and go and go and figure it out. How are you gonna do this? And we're getting to the end, so have fun. Okay, now they're gonna start coming back in a few seconds. This is where we're gonna start wrapping it up. I think that's the last time they I'm putting them in a breakout. Okay, so I think that's going to be your last breakout session. So let's hear what you guys came up with. What did you tell your friend? Well, Wendy, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, that that I at first was misunderstanding and thinking that there was a video to watch together, and I said, I let you know, I think I would just say, assuming it's my neighbor or somebody that that I really know in my life, that I would say. Um, Let's go get some ice cream and come back and watch your video, and uh, and then talk about it after that. And uh, and then Rob said, no, 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 that's it's that it's an article uh, that with pictures. And I said, oh, okay. Well, I would still go get the ice cream and, and go back to my friend's house and all about the ice cream. Look at the pictures and read the article together, and um and then talk about it. My solution was I was going to go home and burn myself and then three days later show her the burn. So see, the aliens got me too. You're going to film that burn. <laughs> We're alien buddies. <laughs> that I, I like Wendy's approach because it, 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 shows her, it showed her friend that like she's still interested in her as a person. Mm -hmm. Even if her friend might have this idea, it doesn't make her like her any less. Mm -hmm. You know that she still values this person. I love the ice cream idea. It's really good. What else? Hey, Roger and Adrian, what'd you come up with? Hey, and Christy. Christy. Oh, Roger, you're muted. If you wanted to say something. Oh well, okay. I can I can talk if I can remember exactly what we said. Oh yeah. So just my thing was, I, I uh. Yeah, I don't know. So what, what exactly did you say, Adrian? It, it, it was another that's interesting kind of approach. I, I don't remember. Yeah, uh, I think I think we should kind of discuss sort of um, if I, I'm just I'm trying to read my notes, decipher my notes. Well, uh, I remember. So um, thanks, Christy. Yeah. So before Roger was making the assumption that like, oh, you should Google that. And assuming that something was out there for him them to find, but now that he knows that there's an article out there, maybe keep asking questions to help them Google in the right direction so that they can have it upon it themselves because they're a lot, a lot more likely to accept it if, if they've discovered it. And so just keep asking questions. And then, um, and then if they, you know, if you discuss the article, you can say, oh, well, that's an interesting theory instead of saying, well, that 
that's conclusive that that your other idea was garbage you know you can say like well that's this is an interesting article mm -hmm. and, and if if they can't find it I think we also said something like are you open to what I have found okay. right instead I, of just saying here it is <laughs> just hey I found something would you be interested more of an approach that's really good that was back to what I don't know if it was Wendy or Christy, because you guys keep flipping on my screen here. <laughs> Every time you go to a breakout room, you come in a different place. But one of you guys said, are you even open to, to this discussion in the first place? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, if they're, if they're like, well, you're ruining all my fun, you stupid skeptic. <laughs> I don't want to have this conversation with you at all. Well, then that's really. So but then it, could, <clears throat> it could be from like a caring perspective, you know, like I cared enough to like follow up on this thing that we were talking about and i think that's exactly right you've shown them you went and watched the video you went and did further research and found the this mick west article um you might have even listened to the video that you know looked at even to it further i mean you've gone beyond probably what the person would have expected you to do because you had time too. I mean, you couldn't have done this if you're sitting next to him in an elevator. I mean, in a in a plane for an hour. But <clears throat> you took the time to do this, and I think that I think that that's going to make a lot of difference to this person because you're telling them, "I heard you," and yeah. that was really interesting, and maybe find out if they if they're interested in hearing more about it or if. Here's what I found. Okay, so let me just look at my yeah. notes. I, I've been thinking about you this week and, you know, I I was worried about you. And so I, you know, want to check in to see if this was still bothering you. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Very kind. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So now that we're getting to the, towards the end of this, the idea, and I'm, I'm trying to really nail this into your head, is that you want to have this conversation so that your friend, when they do have a harmful belief, I mean, really harmful, um, that they'll still come to you and say, hey, you know, we talked about the UFOs and the hairdryers, and I think you're right. It was probably a hairdryer burn. Now that I think about it, I went and looked at my hairdryer and it's got this pattern that sure does match what was on my phone. And then I went and burned myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> and it took a few days for it to show up. So I guess that's why I didn't connect the two, that it was a burn, you know, later. But, you know, since we had that conversation and, you know, you were so nice about it and you didn't make me look like an idiot and I found the answer, you know, because we, we, you kind of showed me to go to this website and, and I, I, you know, they're saying to themselves, they're able to say, see, I'm not really an idiot. I found the answer out. I figured it out. You know, you just kind of helped show me on the way, you know, whatever. But so now that they have a question about something really dangerous, like they're taking some sort of supplements that are really harmful or they're not getting their can they're not going to go go to the cancer doctor, their oncologist because they're going to use health remedies or they think microchips have are in the in the needle and uh, they're being tracked. I mean, when they have that kind of conversation with you, you want to be able to have already established some sort of you know, this framework. And that's what I'm trying to show you guys is that this is here. Now I have one more question for you and we'll just talk about it in front. So going back to pre-bunking and debunking, do you feel like you have a different attitude towards, um, I mean, the value of having a Mick West with, or Kenny Biddle who already has solved this versus, you know, what is your, do you feel like it's a little different now? this inoculation or pre-bunking versus debunking kind of thought give me your thoughts let's start i'll go go ahead wendy go wendy go wendy i, I, I think it's valuable to have our our own um uh, experiences with skepticism and that you know so that we kind of know where to look like who, like what author or columnist or your favorite skeptic has has ex similar experiences that they've written about 
as, but not to just tell your friend who's having this experience, you know, this experience, maybe not getting their vaccination because they have this other false belief, but, it, but not to just say, here, read this and walk away. Cause I, I that definitely, it, um, it, it, it's not going to reach them. They're not, they're not going to have the time. I think that, that it's, it's important that the skepticism be pleasant, mm -hmm. a pleasant experience, and the and to and to just have the the um, people skills. Some people don't have. <laughs> yeah, we certainly do. And because of the pandemic also, we've been kind of isolated. We're not having those one-on-one -on -one experiences with people we did before. Very good thoughts, Wendy. Who else has got something? Adrian, she's got her hand up. Yeah, I think that the hardest thing for any of this, and this would be pre-bunking or anything, is not kind of jumping on the person. I think we all have sort of an instinct to react. And that it to listen to listen to their whole story and not interject uh, i think i told susan about my experience i have a, a very good friend who lovely woman and I, i've got a few of them actually who think this not just one and they believe that they can sort of foretell when things are going to happen particularly bad things and it's really easy just to say what <laughs> you know, laugh or whatever, but, but, you know, and the confirmation bias, of course, is very, very strong in, in these situations. And, but if we actually honestly have an interest in the stories, it's because it's really interesting, especially my one friend, not so much my other friend that I'm thinking of, but my one friend will just tell me the stories. And it's like, oh my God, that's amazing that this, that you, you felt this, et cetera. And so I, I empathize and then she says, would you, do you believe that I have? And so it, because I listened to her, she starts asking me what I think. And then I can honestly say in a kind way, well, actually, I think it was probably just a coincidence, but it's still pretty amazing, right? It's just that sort of the kindness of it, uh, I think is important. And I've had to work on that hard, uh, because I have a lot of friends who have lots of interesting ideas. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's in a uh, work in progress, I have to say. It's not an easy thing to not just jump out and say, well, yeah. yeah. It's a hair dryer. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Though I, I, have have to, I have been very you know, overly sensitive about when people say to me things like, oh, you have plantar fasciitis and this is what you need to do. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I listen to my doctor. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'm, you know, it's, but it's really... You know, when it's hard not to just, right? I don't yeah. need CBD for plantar fasciitis. Hey, Thank Christian you very much. <laughs> Brian, in the article that Susan was talking about, Brian Dunning actually gave a really good example where he, Brian injured himself at the gym or something, I forget what it was, and a neighbor came by knowing he had and offered him, you know, his acupuncturist card. Uh, and, and Brian said, no, I said, thank you very much. Cause it was meant in good spirit or whatever. He yeah. said, that was not the time to argue with the guy. Yeah. And then he said, and later on, maybe, you know, he, I'm about if he, if he asked me, well, did you go? And then you might bring it up and yeah. And, you know, yeah. yeah. Christy, it's what were you very hard about? though, not to get yep. defensive about that. It's, yep. it's, it, and I think that's what we have to think about, right? Christy, we interject. Want... Come on. <laughs> Um, I have a hard time, um, especially during the pandemic. I mean, my whole worldview changed in the last couple of years um, after leaving a fundamentalist religion. And and I saw a lot of people become more extremist on on a completely different side of the spectrum that like. Um, and so it was really hard for me not to just write people off. And I, I did for a time while well, my beliefs were, you know, were in flux. I was trying not to be influenced. I feel like I had been inoculated so much with this one perspective and now I was opening myself up to new perspective. And I was being accused by people that I was only hearing one perspective when in reality I had only been given 
one perspective and I was finding other perspectives to, to balance off of. And so during that time, I, I didn't have the bandwidth to, to engage with people. And so I just wrote them off. And like now that I'm like more secure in myself and more emotionally mature, I, I have more bandwidth to engage with these people again and approach it from what Adrian was saying from like a story perspective. Like there's a reason why, why they have these certain fears or, you know, like I said, a lot of the people are, are like feel the way that they feel about conspiracies because of fear. So yeah. Good. Roger. And I, and I, I can say that I relate because I've, I've had fears, you know, I, so I can draw on those experiences of where I, I have felt frenzied or fanatical about something that now I feel more relaxed about. <laughs> okay, good. Roger, you're the only one who hasn't said anything. Let's hear your thoughts. Uh, just closing thoughts is that, I, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, kind of like from the beginning of whatever I started. So we talked about pre-bunking and debunking and what was right, successful. I don't know, just- I mean, I, I mean pre-bunking seems a matter of education. I, I'm not really sure I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, everything we've done here is debunking, except for maybe one thing somebody said, and I can't remember it. At the time I was like, oh, that's very good pre-bunking. Pre it's gone, long since gone from my head, but uh, I don't know, you know, I, somebody's got to be saying, okay, I just bought this bottle of bleach and I'm going to drink it now before I go, wait, what? Let's exactly, talk that's about an this. emergency, that's it, an emergency. I mean, in, in anything else, even my, what is it, I, ivermectin, is that it? Is that the right one? Yeah. Even my ivermectin guys, you know, they're not actually taking it, they don't have COVID, it's not an emergency situation, I'm just... I, I spent a long time arguing about things that I did not need to argue about. Uh, I, I've Absolutely. Done, That's done enough of that. I mean, yeah. I, I, I still now have a habit of breaking out into uh, your fallacy is, you know, whatever. I mean, I, I tend to do that, but I do that more with like free thinkers or people who are, I know are hmm. searching for those things. But, I do. I do that a lot. Yeah. yeah but mostly, yeah. mostly I'm just, uh, I'm, I wanted I wanted to do street epistemology. I thought I got into it a little bit. I'm a little disappointed with the people individually that are involved in that. I don't necessarily like the way they approach it. It's kind of neat, but I've sort of decided it's not what I want to do. It's not what I want to teach. You know, I'm part of the uh, Arkansas Society of Freethinkers here, and and we've had some things start and stop, and all that. Of course, COVID, but I, I want to get more involved here about. How do we make these arguments? How do we have these arguments and still have friends? You know, that mm -hmm. exactly that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, this was definitely a good exercise talking to these things. I definitely heard some good things from somebody else that I didn't, I wouldn't have thought. You know, mm -hmm. so it's definitely worth my time and beneficial. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit more and and seeing what else you develop and then. Being able to maybe piggyback off of that and develop. That's something. exactly right. Because I'm I don't right. have the answer. So I just made this up out of whole cloth. Christy. And have these workshops here. So I, I like, I like, oh, go ahead. Christy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I like the tactics that this is over time, right? We have time to go and regroup and come back because my my intimidation at the beginning of the workshop was like they are so much more knowledgeable about these things that they're coming to me about and I feel like that's also where I'm not received well is I am more knowledgeable than the other person and so there's nothing they can really say in a debate if I'm just spewing all these facts and vice versa so having pauses and regroup um, is a good that we don't have to come to the conclusion all here and now this is a conversation we're developing skills and and we have a relationship. We already had a have a conversation with somebody, not give them the answer. You don't have to give them the fallacy that they've just committed. You're, you're trying to talk to them about having more conversations, I guess, is the way of saying but, it. But but since you mentioned that, this whole thing is a false dichotomy, right? It's, it's either dichotomy. it's either that people do this to themselves and they just don't remember it, or extraterrestrials have this technology which happens to match a hair dryer just coincidentally, and they're zapping people. But haven't considered the other option, right? Aliens are punking us. They're zapping women with an exact thing that looks like a hairdryer in person just to confuse us. Right. It's it's the old dinosaurs. Uh, the God put the dinosaur bones yeah. in the ground to confuse us. Yes, Roger. 
we heard that one. Oh, you're, you're muted. You're muted. You're muted. That's, what I, that's what I grew up with. Yeah, I grew yeah. up with God put the dinosaurs in the ground to, to make you doubt and, and go to hell. Yeah. Wow. Well, that. my, my, that's weird. My evangelical relatives would say the devil did it. The devil put the bones in there. Well, God works us. in mysterious ways. So wow, that's really mysterious. He does it himself. And wow. Yeah, God did it. I was told God did it. Wow. God, so, you know, or I, I don't know. Anyway, he, so. He tests our faith. I mean, he yeah, tests test, our faith. test your faith. That's, that's, that's always true. <laughs> he tests our faith. He's here to test your faith. Okay, so great job. Uh, we, we're under time. We're just on time. Thank you so much for showing up. Thank you for your great wisdom. Thank you for all the comments because I learned a lot. The stuff that you guys said was different from the stuff I heard when we did our workshop in person. They're all different. Like one of them, um, uh, Karen, she was listening. She at the workshop. She she was like trying to tell her friend, "Darn that that burn that you think's from an alien looks just like the hair dryer burn I got last." <laughs> wow how how amazing that looks just like the hair dryer burn I'm like all right karen that's a little that's you're starting to get a little aggressive there she goes i know but <laughs> she, says, <laughs> she says i'll just make something up and say that's what i i that's how she did it but so i have two more workshops okay i'm doing one on sunday saturday you do not need to come to that because saturday is going to be exactly this workshop again with different people I have no idea how I'm going to do this with a huge group of people. So I guess it's a small group thing. I don't know. I'm, I'm, this is only the second time I've done this workshop. Can so, I come to that? What anything? time of day is it on Saturday? Uh, what time of the day? It's, it, I wanted to be able to get people from other places if they wanted. It's going to be at um, Saturday. Uh, right now I have two people scheduled with me. Three people, two people. It's, Oh, oh so it's no, right it's on my calendar. I'll just look on my paper calendar. In my okay. calendar, <laughs> I thought this was Saturday and then it came up in my, oh, you've got it in two hours. And I'm like, what? Yeah, <laughs> so uh, so 11 to 1, 11 to 1. So yeah. uh, the one I'm going to do on Saturday, if you want to come, that's fine. Uh, it is 11 to 1 and it is the same exact topic. And if you want to come and you want to, you want to be the one helping facilitate it, I will share with you the screens that I have that has all the instructions on it for having it in person. Because you, you think it's going to be a large group on Saturday? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I think it's going to be like this group or or because okay. i was going to say i could offer to to help out if it was a large well, group you're you're welcome to look at the screens and and see the lessons as i'm doing them the other two i have that i haven't scheduled just yet are going to be on the mandela effect and the next one is on luck Ooh, i want to do that one so i <laughs> am rob it's just for you that'll be fun mandela effect and it's luck and so the idea is always the conversation is going to be the same where i'm trying to uh facilitate a conversation a workshop hoping that you guys will maybe say i could do this and want to do this in your organization or you know somebody in your organization who would be better at it than you and you want them to do it so you know what i mean if, if we can have these conversations with small groups or with your your own individual organization i think it's a it's another tool than having a speaker because when you go and you you have a speaker, that's all fun and cool, but you don't really interact until you get to the Q and A. But this it should be about you, mostly, and learning a new skill, meeting new people. That's why I'm mixing you up, and and learning that. So now, since you're uh, in touch with the fact people, or did you suggest it to them? To the who? The, the Philadelphia Association yeah. of Critical Thinking. The fact people. No, no, no. I, I, no. Uh. -uh. It, it's i gave it out to everybody i put it on everybody's facebook page i mean no, but i mean you're you're talking to them you're gonna give a talk yeah, so but I i'm gonna you're... give a talk i don't want to do a yeah, workshop. yeah. but, but so talk. you're in contact with the people who run it so i'm just saying you could suggest it to them as a you know well another, we'll another event yeah, so here another is event. um what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go over to the Bay Area skeptics um pub uh, skeptics in the pub which is online so if you oh guys yeah yeah, yeah. Join me, that i usually join that um I am going to probably go get something to eat and then go over to it. Um, do you have a link? 
I'm looking at it here. It's on from seven to nine, so it's. it's no, right. I just always go to their Facebook group and I find out what it is because I never. Remember. So this is the virtual skeptics in the pub. It tends yeah, to be Bay people all skeptics. over the place because it's virtual in the pub. So if you want to go over there and hang out, that'd be great. But thank you guys for joining. This was fun. So I have a question. Those other two workshops, do you already have Facebook events made for them, or you're going to announce them? I will make one in the future. I, I want to. I just picked these two times. Saturday and tonight because I I was free on my calendar. Mm -hmm. um, so I have no idea if they're great mm -hmm. times for most people. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. And I can do this over and over and over again. If I can, if I am told I have a group of friends or I have a, my group wants to do this, my, the North Texas skeptics or the, the Arkansas um, free thought society, we've got like 10 people who want to do this. I will facilitate it for you. No problem. Cool. So it, it's, it's something I would do. And I'll, you just tell me what time would work out best for everybody. And I'll come and do it as long as it's not Thursday night, <laughs> my Thursday night, but I'll happily yeah. do it for you. But that's, but the idea is, is that I'd like to get this to, um, as a community to start thinking of Edgar or Edgar, um, start thinking about more of an idea of being able to go do, um, spread this a little further. Because I think it's I think it's a good exercise, and we're all out of practice talking to human beings. <laughs> I mean, a person. All right. Thank so. you for doing this. This Thank is fun. Good oh, good. Thank nice you. Nice to meet everybody. Well, See you Rogers tomorrow. See most of you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Um, bye. Yeah. For trivia, for trivia tomorrow, I have an RFR um, support group, so I'm going to be popping in late. Okay, Do I just fine. get dropped into? People will love you coming group. in late, Christy, because the person, because the person who comes in late gets put on the team in the last place. So people will be <laughs> like, oh, I get her. We get her. We get her. They get all excited. Okay. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.